Hey friends, it's Yulia. Today, we're going to talk about the 250 box challenge. I'll touch on my own experience with it. We'll cover the challenges and pitfalls and hopefully answer the question, should you try it? Let's go. The 250 box challenge is exactly what it sounds like. You draw 250 boxes. It is the capstone project of lesson one of draw a box, where you learn about perspective, lines, ellipses, and you guessed it, boxes. If you haven't completed that yet, it is a great place to start and a prerequisite, so to say, for this challenge. Link is in the description below for you to check it out. Here's how Drawbox recommends doing this challenge. You draw boxes that are freely rotated in space from a certain point of view. You also draw through the back of the box, meaning you can see the back corner as if you had x-ray vision. After completing a page of boxes, you check the line's convergences to make sure they're happily pointing in the right directions. As you can see in the image, the red top right lines are well done, meaning they will converge at one point off screen. The other two sets of lines are a little bit iffy, but that's exactly what we're trying to improve on through this challenge. When I was first starting this challenge, I was worried I wouldn't be able to come up with a variety of different box poses and rotations. I was proved correct. In the beginning, I drew the most simple, uncreative box possible. And it went okay. It went okay. I tried to add a little variety with the shapes, sizes, tilts uh, throughout the first page, and things got a little hairier from there. For example, I knew box six was doomed from the start. I didn't even draw the back since I was so sketched out and didn't know where to put the back corner. Looking back at it, actually, six was not, not too bad. And I dive into why I thought I was doing it wrong a little bit later in the video. Box number 10 was dicey too. I really struggled with showcasing the bottom plane of the box or the bottom side of the box since it's not a common angle for us in our day-to-day -day lives to view objects from. I also drew too many boxes on the same page and I needed to get the bottom pages of the sketchbook out from underneath my top sheet so I could actually draw with my shoulder and have a freer range of motion. Also unimpressed with my line quality, but although in my point, it was about four or five months since I actually started lesson one of draw a box, so I was quite rusty. Around box 30, I felt like I was doing something wrong and that something was me drawing in two point perspective and not three point perspective as I should have been. Meaning I was trying to keep all of my lines parallel and only going to two vanishing points and not three as you should. The boxes didn't change to orient themselves as they were actually 3D with the sides tapering off. So I reread and watched the original challenge video and got a little more clarity. I also found it really helpful to look for others' boxes, specifically those who have done them correctly, and identify why their boxes were correct. Around box 75, I decided to end any and all confusion. I drew three sets of vanishing points and drew a box on top of those vanishing points. This is basically what we did in a previous draw box lesson, but since it was such a long time for me since I actually did that lesson, this was a really, really good refresher. And I kind of figured out what my problem was. I was taking the phrase three sets of parallel lines much too seriously. They're not supposed to look like railroad tracks. They're supposed to converge at the vanishing points, ideally. And another thing that really helped me while I was drawing these was thinking in terms of planes. For example, the top and the bottom plane would have the same line angles. The two side planes would have the same line angles. And so would the other two sets of planes. I was finally feeling more confident in my box making abilities. To make things a little bit more interesting, I sat down to draw box 153 and I saw a small package sitting next to my chair. I put it in my lap and I put it in front of me and tried capturing all the different angles. I basically had my very own box model live in studio. Wow! This made thinking of new ideas much, much easier. You can see the results in drawings 154 to 162. While the boxes themselves don't look that much different from my previous boxes, it was really, really great practice to practice transforming the 3D shape into 2D live on paper. I would highly recommend this, especially if you're feeling stuck for ideas. As I was getting close to the end of the challenge, I was first and foremost relieved to be getting done with boxes. I would see them haunting my visions, swirling in my dreams. 
No, it's totally fine. I broke up the box work into small chunks, so I'd only really do one or two pages per day to try to keep it manageable and not burn myself out. It's also really important that I was focused when I was doing the boxes because they take a surprising amount of concentration and it was good to have a set number of pages before I went into the day so that I knew, okay, I need to do two pages per day, totally fine, manageable. It's also a lot more beneficial to your learning too. If you sit down and let the technique absorb after you check your vanishing points and see the mistakes that you're making. By breaking into numerous sessions, I felt like it helped it stick better in my brain. I also noticed that the first box of the day was usually the very worst one of them all. Your brain definitely takes a little while to switch into perspective mode. So to answer the question, is the 250 box challenge helpful? I think yes. Overall, I definitely feel like I improved my knowledge of perspective and 3D space. While the perfect box remains forever elusive, I feel much more confident in drawing things like cityscapes, body anatomy, and a lot, a lot more. Almost every realistic drawing can be broken up into 3D figures, so kind of having this knowledge feels like a rite of passage as an artist. And as a bonus, my line quality and hatching were much, much better at the end of this challenge. And that's it for this video. If you attempted this challenge, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. Hopefully this video was helpful. Maybe you'll try the challenge next. And if you liked it, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. I promise it won't just be box content in the future. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.